Welcome to Swedish Tales of Horror and Drama. Today we will delve into a tragic event that occurred in the fall of 1960, the catastrophic plane crash at Vikbo Farm. A fighter strike aircraft from the Swedish Air Force suffered engine failure and crashed on a farm in the heartland of Sweden. The aircraft first hit the barn combined with stables and then bounced straight through the farmhouse. There were seven people in the house who perished immediately. The pilot ejected himself with the ejection seat after aiming the gliding aircraft at a lake. So let's dive right into the events leading up to this tragedy. During the 1950s the Swedish Air Force was built up to become one of the largest in the world. The background was that the peace felt fragile and the Cold War that followed the Second World War caused many countries to arm themselves. Sweden's geographical position between NATO and the Warsaw Pact was indeed vulnerable. Before we go on, I want to remind you who listen and watch to press subscribe and like if you want to take part in more material of similar kind. One of the aircraft types that were cornerstones in the Swedish Air Force at the time was the Saab 32 Lansen, the Lance in English, available in both interceptor, strike and reconnaissance versions. The aircraft in question here was an aircraft from the strike wing of F-6 in Karlsborg, on the west side of Lake Vettern. The Saab Lansen was a very modern and powerful aircraft in the 60s. The Air Force had 456 Lansens, among well over a thousand military aircraft in total, and here we can see a division of Lansens from the F-6 wing. The division consists of eight aircraft and the photographer sits in the eighth. One of the accidents in 1960 did not claim the life of the pilot. However, seven civilians lost their lives and three farms had to be shut down for good when the farmers died. It was a completely ordinary day at Vikbo Farm, just outside Köping in October 1960, when an unsuspecting work team were about to sit down for coffee. At the same time, 15 kilometers away, a Saab 32 Lansen had suffered an engine failure and was descending rapidly towards a pending tragedy. On site at Vikbo Farm were four from the Anderson family and three neighbors. At 10 o'clock there was a coffee break and the work was left for a short gathering around the kitchen table. The pilot Magnusson had started at about 9.40 from F6 wing at Karlsborg, about 200 kilometers from Vikbo farm. His task for the day was to do a weather reconnaissance. After about 15 minutes the jet engine on the aircraft suddenly stops. He sees that there is fuel left and he tries to restart the engine, but it is futile. Magnusson has no choice when the engine gets silent. He takes the plane into a steep climb to slow down, aims the plane at the lake ahead, pops off the hood and ejects. He survives the parachute jump, but the stray plane has turned into a lethal projectile. The plane travels for 15 kilometers over the countryside before it descends towards Vikbo at a speed of 300 kilometers per hour. On contact with the ground, the plane destroys a barn which catches fire, bounces and goes straight through the kitchen of the dwelling house by the farm. The result was horrifying. Seven people who were settled down in the kitchen are killed immediately. The red dotted line shows the trajectory of the pilotless plane. Here we can see the scene of the accident later that day, with wreckage from the plane and smoking remains of the farm in the background. Firefighters and other personnel are working with extinguishing and searching for bodies. The picture shows the barn that took the first hit, as well as the farmhouse. 
A few homeless chickens are pecking at the remains of what just minutes ago was a barn and hen house. This is a tragic picture from the funeral with seven coffins. To further dilute the tragedy, another elderly relative died just after the funeral. The shock and emotional storms were probably too much. The Swedish Air Force was at its strongest in 1964 with well over a thousand combat aircraft, most of which were very modern and powerful. Only three countries had stronger air forces than Sweden at the time, United States, Soviet Union and Great Britain. The Air Force practiced hard and tough with practice moments that are unthinkable today. The reason was that it was considered that war was a reality that could come any day. Sweden had maximum preparedness to defend its borders. The threat came from the east, although it was not officially stated, and the Air Force would take the first and biggest blows. In order to be able to form an effective defense against the Soviet attack, Sweden's defense had to be very well prepared and well practiced. The combination of forced build-up, rapid technological development and young, sometimes inexperienced flying personnel caused fatalities. The Air Force as an organization did not always have time to adapt to the growing operations. Here we see a number of Saab Lansons lined up in the yard at the F-6 wing. A total of 550 pilots died in accidents in the Swedish Air Force during the Cold War. Throughout 1960 to 1961, it was at its worst. During that period, there were 75 military air crashes that claimed the lives of 46 airmen. It was in this period that the accident in Vikbo happened. The reason for the engine stop on the day in question was a fault in the fuel system which could occur when there was an extra gas tank installed. The fault was known before the Weekbow accident and all Lansons were to be modified to avoid possible engine stoppages. However, the plane in question had not yet been modified. The picture shows examples of some different accidents that happened during the current period. The accident scene is photographed here in 2020. The sad pile of debris is the only thing left of the farmhouse at Vikbo farmstead. The attachment for the farm's flagpole remains a tragic sight. One of the outhouses at the farm survived the accident and still stands today. In this picture we can see one of the two survivors in the Anderson family, the son Rune, who in the picture on the left is being comforted by rescue personnel at the scene. The other survivor in the Anderson family was the grandmother, who was in the laundry house when the accident happened. The 80-year-old Rune looks perfectly recognizable from the old picture. The families who were affected were unfortunately met with silence from the authorities and the Air Force, and no one received any substantial financial or practical help. For the now 80-year-old Rune Andersson, the disaster has been a long-term trauma, where the Air Force's silence and lack of decent compensation contributed to deep bitterness. Recently, the Air Force has contacted Anderson and arranged a ceremony and a rest laying to commemorate the incident. After personal contacts between the Air Force chiefs and Anderson, the bitterness and trauma have now finally been put aside after over 60 years. Already three months after the disaster in Vikbo, the pilot Magnusson has chosen to leave his flying career behind by resignation from the Air Force. 
According to his friends, he took the accident very hard. He said that if he had known what was going to happen, he would have stayed and piloted the plane down, including himself, into the nearby lake. After completing his flying career, he became a gas station manager. He was never charged with any crime in connection with the plane crash. He did nothing wrong. Well, that was the dramatic and tragic tale of the air crash at Vikbo 62 years ago. I hope you have enjoyed it. Please click on subscribe and like to encourage me to present more Swedish tales of horror and drama.